So let's get started. Uh, today's session is called Programming Solutions for Repetitive Tasks with Nicholas Arlano, Research Team Lead at SIMS. So a little bit about Nico. So Nico is an architect from Universidad Católica of Chile, specialized in systems and technologies and certified in developing BIM projects. Uh, he was an adjunct instructor of building techniques and construction at this university. His first years of professional experience were dedicated to researching the benefits of wood construction in the Timber Innovation Centre at the same university. He moved to Canada in 2015 and started work at Nor Limited, where he learned how to write scripts that allowed him to automate several solutions to repetitive production problems using algorithms. Uh, he is currently a research team lead at the Carleton Mercer Media Studio. In addition, he teaches BIM Fundamentals at Algonquin College and is the Director of Research of Digital Building National Capital Region, a group dedicated to build and facilitate connections among AECO professionals. He is currently studying his PhD at Carleton University, focusing on the digital project and computer sciences and their impact on architecture. So today's session, uh, a little bit about it. So uh, archi an architecture project requires tasks that are intensely repetitive. Nobody likes doing them. However, sometimes they're unavoidable. Although Revit has removed some of them, it is difficult to eliminate them all. One way to reduce them is by scripting solutions. So Dynamo allows designers uh, who do not know how to write code to have access to simple but powerful scripting. It provides flexibility to access inaccessible places inside the general functionalities of Revit and to manip manipulate large amounts of data and complex geometry with precision. Additionally, it has the capability of creating data uh, diagrams associated with three-dimensional software in real time generating a parametric model. It can be integrated with Revit and Excel and generate uh, various file types as output. With extra coding expertise, one can go even further due to Dynamo's compatibility with Python. So Sims uses Dynamo to increase efficiency in its BIM projects. Nico has developed many uh, of them uh, to manipulate data, simulate complex geometry, quantify materials, and import elements and data from CAD and Excel into Revit. It can also be used to compare model variations, automate space labeling and work set placement, and to define workflows for exporting geometry into other applications. Uh, Dynamo is, a vers is versatile and has a tremendous potential for research and design. Problems that require repetitive and programmable action involving overwhelming amounts of data can be potentially solved with a script. To illustrate some of its potential, Nico will present examples of how to of how simple scripts have helped him save thousands of hours to allow him more sp help him spend more time in creative duties. Uh, wouldn't we all like to do that? Um, so I'll pass it over now on to Nico and let's get the session started. Hi, Lara. Uh, can you hear me well? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Um, Okay, I assume you can hear me. Uh, well, thanks, Lara, for that introduction. I, after that, I, I don't know if I got much to say because that, that was great. <laughs> I uh, well, uh, just to complement the, my my presentation. Um, okay. Yeah. So. Just to complement what Lara just said, I am doing my first year of uh, PhD at Carton University. I just finished it, and I'm beginning to explore the impact of coding in architecture. And I'm really excited to keep exploring this path because uh, I see a great opportunity in using these tools uh, to enhance the cre creative process. So I'm going to show you a little bit about my how my process has been in the last couple of years. Uh, so. I know this uh, virtual session is, uh, is kind of a new thing for everybody, but I hope to be able to transmit to all of you uh, my passion for this uh, tool and for these uh, digital processes. And by the end of my presentation, you should have an idea of what is Dynamo, uh, what a visual programming tool is, uh, what uh, is a node in Dynamo, and how Dynamo can facilitate interoperability, collaboration between different disciplines, etc. And also, I'm going to show some examples of, for solution to repetitive tasks that I have been able to create 
in the last couple of years uh, and in order to for you to understand the potential potential that the scripting has for designers and construction professionals so first of all as lara mentioned in the, in the introduction when when you're working on a digital project there are so many tasks that we do every day that are a uh, intensively repetitive and these tasks normally get assigned to the new intern or to the younger architect and however, it doesn't matter how excited this person uh, is with, uh, with her or his uh, new position, nobody likes doing robotic tasks uh, for an extended period of time, of course. So when I was in that position, uh, after having listened to every single podcast available, uh, I asked my manager if I could spend some time, like a couple of weeks uh, a day maybe, researching a better way to do this or to auto automating these processes. And at that time, uh, at that time I, uh, my manager were really generous and allowed me to try, to give it a try. And that's when I discovered this uh, uh, Autodesk tool called Dynamo. Uh, th that is a, a tool that had the potential to automate those of some of these instances. So what is this? What is Dynamo for the people that have never heard about it? Uh, also, there is a poll there so you can uh, start now if, if you have heard of Dynamo before, you can complete that. Um, so it's, it's a software developed by Autodesk, the, the big uh, uh, software company for the, uh, for the construction industry. And, uh, and if you go to the Dynamo website, they describe Dynamo as a visual programming tool that aims to be accessible to both non-programmers and programmers alike. It gives users the ability to visually script behavior and define custom pieces of logic and script uh, using uh, textual programming languages like uh, Python. Uh, in the, I'm going to explain that also later. That means that designers, engineers, or construction professionals without any computer-related background or who do not know how, uh, how to write code can access to basic but powerful scripting. Uh, scripting is uh, a type of coding uh, used to automate processes. So Dynamo provi provides the flexibility to, to explore inaccessible places inside the general functionalities of Revit, such as the API or the application program interface. Also, I'm going to mention a little bit more about that later. And to manipulate uh, large amounts of data and complex geometry with precision. Um, so how does it work? Uh, let me try to briefly explain the basis of Dynamo before I show my examples. Uh, so how do you interact with Dynamo? The most elemental of this in Dynamo are the nodes. Uh, so, the, so these boxes are called nodes and, and they are objects that you can connect with these wires um, in order to create a visual program. Uh, so each node performs uh, a performs an operation or a function or an instruction. Um, and this could be as simple as uh, storing a number or to do an addition. In this case, for example, I have two numbers, one and two, and this is doing an addition of those two numbers. So the output would be three. Uh, and uh, it, it can do uh, also complex actions such as creating geometry or many other things that I'm going to show. Uh, this is based on the very basic of computational process, which is that there will be behavior or something will happen if there is at least one uh, input. Uh, an input is uh, an event external to the object that modifies this object in any manner. And this behavior uh, may produce one or many outputs. Okay, so an output is any change produced by this input in, in the its environment okay in this diagram on the right <laughs> i i am trying to show the designer being part of this digital project so here's the designer that eyes brains and hands here so you think what do you want dynamo to do and you tell your hands uh, um, you, you tell your hands to input that information through physical input hardware such as the keyboard or the mouse and then uh, these devices transform uh, your your body expression into computer language 
and the computer process process that information. And um, uh, sorry, the computer process your instruction and graphically output uh, the results through the output hardware, such as the computer monitor, the speaker, etc. And then we input that information through our senses, and we uh, that way uh, the uh, the cycle gets completed. And this way we interact with computers. Okay. So what uh, examples of nodes, there are many, many different types of nodes. Uh, for example, here we can use nodes in Dynamo to create lists of elements and to manipulate them. Also to compare elements uh, with these operator, operators, uh, to manipulate text. In this case, text is called a script. So a lot of ways of uh, manipulate text and to work with it and also to do math or to do uh, formulas or mathematical operations. Uh, and you can also create uh, geometry nodes. So Dynamo display on the uh, on the background, a three-dimensional preview of what you are creating in real time. In this case, for example, I have a node that asks me for a point and a radius, a point and a radius, okay? So first I have a, to create a point, so I put in the Cartesian coordinates, I put a, a, an X, a Y, and maybe a Z. In this case, a Z is going to be zero. So I, I have created the first point, and then it asked me for a radius. So I put a number eight here. And uh, you can see in the background image, um, Yeah, so you can see here in the background image how the circle was created in this uh, insertion point and with that radius, okay? And uh, also you have code block. Code block is this little box that allows you to, uh, it's, a, it's a simplified version of coding. So the code block is a unique feature of Dynamo that, dy that dynamically links a visual programming environment with a text-based one, okay? So it, ha it has access to all the nodes of Dynamo, but in a, in a more simple uh, way. So for example, here you can use uh, uh, the code block to create a number or, or a double uh, is the way that, that is called in Dynamo to create a sequence or a list of numbers. So for example, numbers from zero to three here, to create text or a string, and also to create uh, sequences of text. So from A to B, for example, here. So those are lists of elements. And you can also uh, use the syntax, and this is almost like programming. So you can, for example, um, create operations, two plus four equals six, I believe. Uh, Dynamo almost never made mistakes in those kinds of operations. That's why we can use it as a good uh, complement to our work. You can also use use it for input. So you convert text into a variable, and then you can input uh, information into that variable. So in this case, A plus B is never going to be uh, eight, but because A means three and B means five, the result of A plus B means uh, eight, okay? Then you can combine different different formats. For example, in this case, a script and double, uh, sorry, a string and double, or text and number. And also, you can uh, create other types of outputs. Uh, you can also create lists. In this case, for example, I created a list of these uh, four, sorry, of these three strings. And then the fourth one is a variable that you can input from another code block. So you can have a list of four, uh, in this case, band members. And then I am creating this string called Beatles, and the equal sign will assign uh, this list to that variable. And also you can take the elements from the list uh, using the index, and you can also do other operations, for example, like count the amounts of elements of the list or stuff like that. And also we have a conditional statements, and most of the scripts that I'm going to show today are based on the on the on this logic. It's, it's based on the Boolean operation. So if something is true, do this. If something is false, do this. So it's always two possibilities. 
So in this case, I'm using the if node. So I have a test that is a Boolean, um, a Boolean list, true, false, false, true. For, in this case, for example, I am asking these strings if they start with the letter A. So because apple, apricot, and avocado start with the letter A, they are true, 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 true. Orange, banana start with different letters, so they are false. Uh, so as a result, the if will put the letter A if this is true, and other if this is false, and the end result will be a list called A, other, A, other, other, okay? So that's how it works, and you can also use the same kind of logic for a code block. So the code block logic is like this. If question mark, true, colon, false, okay? And you can have the same amount of results. For example, here, if a number is greater than another number, or here, for example, if a number equals, equals would be double uh, equal sign, and we'll have the same uh, result. Uh, uh, additionally, as I was saying, uh, you can use uh, Python. So I, I have my second poll there. If, if you can, uh, please, uh, Curtis, uh, show that one. Uh, if you're familiar with uh, Python at all. Well, but if you aren't, uh, it is important to highlight that this tool is not only for beginners. Uh, people with some coding expertise can go even farther do Dynamics compatibility with this language, a Python, which is a high uh, level programming language and one of the most popular among programmers in the world. Uh, so um, with Python, one can access the Revit API, as I said before, which is the program that works behind the scenes, allowing users to interact with the functions of the software and also allow uh, programs to communicate between each other. So it's very important to have access to this. And knowing how to access the API is useful to customize the experience by creating, for example, special uh, functionalities within Dynamo that one will be able to access without knowing Python. But as I said before, uh, if you don't know Python, uh, Dynamo is a great tool anyways without it. So you can, you can create many different scripts, and the ones that I'm going to show in this presentation are most of them created without the use of Python. So if you don't know this tool yet, uh, you can still get a, like, a lot from Dynamo. Um, then, so what, what are the benefits? So it uh, allows, uh, allows uh, designers to create uh, da data diagrams associated with three-dimensional, so data diagrams uh, associated with three-dimensional, uh, parametric model to manipulate large amounts of data and to simulate geometry and to also to quantify materials. It is great for interoperability and interoperability is in the BIM handbook is defined as, uh, as, as, the, as the ability to interact different uh, programs. So for a model uh, data is generated in part to be shared with other applications. So for example, for early project feasibility studies, for collaboration with engineers, clients, and consultants, and also later for construction. So this requires a, var a variety of uh, export and import translation between softwares. And because Dynamo uh, can be integrated with different softwares such as Revit, Excel, AutoCAD, uh, and also generating various file types as outputs, as, such as SAP files, CSV, Excel, GPG, etc. So in this way, it faci facilitates interoperability. In, the, in this example that I'm showing here, uh, we are using Dynamo to create a digital twin uh, of Cartoon University campus, and we have to be able, you ha we have been able to read data from the a URL from the web, and based on that, make periodic changes to the model in real time. And, 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 and as I was saying, integrating different formats such as uh, uh, CAD files, Excel, etc. And uh, basically, Dynamo is a great tool uh, to program solutions to everyday problems, saving the designer and the production team thousands of hours of repetitive tasks in addition to obtaining more accurate results. Uh, Okay, so what uh, to use Dynamo for? Uh, as Laura was mentioning, I have been using Dynamo 
now it's at Sims and before in my last job to increase the efficiency in BIM projects, to manipulate data, to simulate complex geometry, quantify materials and manage importing of elements from CAD and Excel to Revit, to compare uh, the variation between models, uh, automate uh, space labeling, to place elements in the right work set automatically, to define workflows for exploring, uh, for exporting Revit into other applications, I said, uh, among many others. So I'm going to show those uh, later in the application, some examples, of course, I'm not going to show all. Uh, but basically, any any problem that requires a repetitive programmable action or that involves overwhelming amount of the data uh, can be potentially solved with a dynamo script. Um, so, unfortunately, today I won't have time to talk about best practices of using Dynamo, or I won't have time to do a tutorial of how to create the scripts that I'm going to show, but you can research them. There are many resources uh, online. You can use uh, the Dynamo forum that is really active uh, and really great, and also YouTube has thousands of videos uh, about Dynamo, and I encourage you to look at those resources because that's the way I have been learning. Also, LinkedIn uh, Learn have like good resources, very updated resources to uh, learn Dynamo and Python. But I want to show today are examples that are amateur at Dynamo, such as myself in, for the last couple of years, I can start creating uh, pretty easily. Okay, so it's important to consider that the learning curve uh, it could be uh, a bit frustrating at the beginning. Uh, but uh, I encourage you to keep trying, to be patient, and to like, try as much as you can. And it takes it takes time to become accustomed to the workflow, but it, it is absolutely worth it. I recommend it. Uh, once one becomes familiar with the software and with the possible strategies to overcome a problem, the solution becomes easier, cleaner, and more intuitive. Um, Uh, so let's start. So it's important first to understand the problem well uh, and learn how to instruct those in, 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 in uh, those instructions to Dynamo. Uh, so normally our supervisor or project manager will give us a straightforward instruction to follow, for example, to recognize a pattern of, of steps, something like that. And you have to try to think how this robotic instruction can be transmitted to the software to do it for you. Um, uh, so in this example, for example, uh, uh, we were uh, room labeling uh, in, a in a campus that had many buildings, like I, I think more than 10 buildings. And there were like thousands of room. And the, in this case, in, in that, at that time, I was the intern that I had to label all those rooms. So how do you do that? First, you identify the number of the building manually, of course, then the sector of the building. In this case, it was the west, first floor, also the closest the closest uh, grid intersection. So in this case, because this room was closer to the intersection of the grid L and 5, you have to manually input L05. And then because this room is the first one in that closer to the intersection, you put the suffix 01. Uh, but, of course, doing this takes you weeks and it's really painful. So this is a script that looks complicated because I, I was very amateur when I created this. Does that for you. So select the elements automatically, uh, input the building information, uh, identify the sector of, of the elements, uh, identify the level in the project. Also, here, for example, it takes all the grid lines and creates those intersections with that code automatically and, input, and inputs that information in the mark or in the room number, sorry. And then the suffix, and you're done. That information sends, goes to Revit, and it's accurate, and it takes a couple of seconds. Same process with the door. So when you have all the rooms, then thousands of doors have to be labeled. and you have first the face. So if it's an existing door, it has to be D. It was a new door. Sorry, if it's an existing door, it has to be EX. If it's a new door, it has to be D. Then the room number. And also, it has to be the room number uh, related to the room where the door opens to. So for example, if this door is open to this 
space, maybe it's gonna take the other ones also. And if it's, this is the first door, it will take a letter A if there are three ABC. And also that process was manual and it was really easy to make mistakes doing this because you normally leave that task to the end of the day when you're tired, when you're distracted. So this uh, uh, automatic door mark was the same thing, was uh, finding the door onto the two room and was automate, automating the process. And also you can create filters, for example, if the door opens to a corridor, instead of using that corridor number, use the door where the, where the door is opening from. So you can, with the Boolean uh, operations, you can uh, put filters and create those kind of, uh, of uh, if conditional statements, okay? And then also you can put like maybe a manual suffix if you want to manipulate that, otherwise it's automatic, and then uh, exclude doors that you don't want to manually put, and that information sent, gets sent to Revit. Um, next, uh, this one was to cre it was also very uh, intensively repetitive. It was to create a workplace 2.0 calculation, so interior fit apps, and uh, in Revit, for the moment, it's really hard to combine different, uh, to schedule different categories. So for example, furniture, rooms, area, uh, et cetera. Elements are hard to compare them and to put them all in the same, uh, in the same uh, database. So with Dynamo, we can also automate that. And for this one, we had to be every day checking the areas. If the areas, for example, if the, if, the, that if, if a particular room got bigger or if, if there were more work sets uh, assigned to a particular room, all the calculation had to change, the space utilization factor had to change, the distance to the bathroom had to change, and everything was manual and really intense. And, and every day we had to create a screenshots of all those calculations and then send everything to Excel. So the, again, messy because amateur, but every time that you get better at using Dynamo. This gets cleaner, smaller, more easy to interact. And in this case, uh, selecting all the elements, identifying by sector, for example, by scope box, this is the west, this is the east, identifying where the elements are, the, la the level, everything, and then output all the calculations. Uh, for example, area results, elements, and also send all the information back to Revit and also to Excel. This is another way, for example, for us to co collaborate with consultants that were not using Revit at that moment. So we were sharing the information through Excel, that is a tool that most people uh, are familiar with. And these uh, sheets were created automatically every time that we run the script. So it saves us a, lo a lot of time and uh, mistakes. Same with this. Uh, for every submission, we had to create a package, and the package contained hundreds uh, or maybe, yeah, hundreds of, of sheets. And we had to make sure that for the printing set, the right sheets were included. Also, we had to make sure for every uh, title block of 100 sheets that they contain the right information uh, for the people that design, the, the people that draw, review, approve, and also that was a, was something very repetitive to do. And in this case, uh, I created this script that was easily ma manipulated by the rest of the team where they uh, were able to input the information in these green boxes, all the information about that current package, and then click run and all the uh, title blocks get updated and the, the right uh, printing set was created without mistake. So uh, you could be 100% sure that the package was correct with the right information if everything was inputted uh, properly. And this is another workflow that we had, that we had to create these boxes that are just lines, color lines, based on something called the room space type. And, and, and again, every time that the particular room or space was modified, we had to update all those lines and change the color if the type changed. And sometimes also you forget to do those kind of things. So automatic, this process was uh, the best uh, thing to do. 
First, Dynamo creates the lines, then set the right color for each uh, space, um, uh, for each space type, and then send all that back into Revit. And you can run that uh, every day, or because it takes seconds to do all this, and for for uh, a human, this could take a long time. Also, we were creating diagrams. Uh, here, the client was asking to generate cube diagram, uh, quick diagrams based on different materials, for example. So we were able to test multiple design options, and the diagrams were produced in real time with all the information about uh, square meter cost, uh, linear meters for lighting fixtures. And this was graphically displayed in a way that the client was understanding what was happening while we were changing the design. Uh, automatic work set is set every element on the model into the right uh, work set. Uh, automating this process also saves a lot of time and keeps all the elements in the right place. And for collaborating with big projects with many actors, this is really useful because all the actors know exactly where the elements are. They can open just the work set of the elements that they are going to use, and they can be sure that everything is going to be in the right place. Okay, and this process was taking all those elements and automatically putting that into the right works. And you can run this every day, save and save you that, that, that header. Uh, this one, you can use Dynamo to categorize group of elements together. Uh, last fall, we published this, uh, this workflow into the TAD journal, a very famous uh, uh, journal for architectural design. And in this case, we use a script to automate the process of, of turning a B model into BR for the library of the parliament. And the process was done manually, and it was very time consuming. And in consistent, it manually or identify each element and uh, group them by a geometry level uh, in order to improve the poly count or the amount of triangles or faces to generate a mesh. And this script was created to, to speed that process of filtering uh, to reduce time to decrease the risk of error, etc. And this script automated the process and allowed uh, quick filtering. Um, and and to explore the process. Uh, this script collected all the required elements from Revit. Elements were automatically grouped based on the Revit family category and assigned into one of those geometry levels. And uh, the elements were also, also easily isolated for exporting from Revit to other platforms, VR environments. And this script decreases the pre-filtering and exporting in an average of 80% of time. So it was very successful. Uh, also, you can use Dynamo, as I said, to import and export data uh, from different models. And in this way, you can compare different models. In this case, for center block, we were using one model, and other party were using a different model. And with this tool, we were able to compare them and to see and to verify if there were differences between them, uh, taking all that information, putting it into Dynamo, and then uh, turn it into Excel for verification. And in the other way around, automatic generation, for example, of DFH or Dove frame hardware packages come from door schedules, as uh, in this case, Excel, and uh, be import uh, into Revit, sorry, into Dynamo, and also exported to collaborate with uh, DFH providers. Uh, and you can also verify all that back into Excel. Some disciplines do not use Revit yet, and with this tool, makes it easy to communicate and collaborate with them. Uh, those are the examples that I had to show, that, that I had to show today. Uh, there are many more, but of course, the time is limited. So just let me show you just a, a couple of good practices that I have been implementing. First is to control what goes out. So here in the bottom left of Dynamo, uh, you can uh, uh, set it to manual, so every time that you click run, the script runs, or automatically. It means that every time that you do a change, uh, the uh, script gets updated and does and runs uh, automatically again. And um, also, uh, the second one is to add this uh, little node that I, or code block that I created, that is, if the Boolean uh, node is true, uh, do something, and if it's false, 
um, don't lose anything. So for example, for overriding information and you want to be safe to run all the script to see that everything is correct before you uh, export it to um, to Revit or to Excel, you can use this little node. For example, if it's false, empty list. If it's true, all elements are going to go and get overridden. Uh, and then the second one that I also recommend is to organize your script with different colors. This doesn't matter. This is just the one that I use. Online, you can find many different standards. But basically, is that in this case, for example, light green means that uh, those are the inputs where the rest of the team can interact with your script. Uh, and they can input everything. They, they, there are sliders. They can input uh, numbers or or text or even boolean to control your script all the operation that happened behind the scenes so everything that nobody wants to know and uh, and that uh, yeah, on, only the person creating this script uh, needs to understand so that could be a little more messy then calculations so in blue i put all the mathematical formulas all the uh, uh, mathematical operations so also you can check in the blue box uh, where all the numbers are being created that you that with, with your script uh, in orange i put everything that gets overridden into revit and in dark green uh, everything that gets sent to excel so you can create your own organization in a way to make this uh, more user friendly for your for your uh, work environment so in conclusion, uh, Dynamo is a very versatile tool. Uh, it, its potential is only limited to the imagination of the user. And um, so just think about what you need to script and just go ahead. It can save uh, us uh, a lot of time that can be spent, can be spent more productively. And uh, uh, as, as I was saying, investing a day or hours creating a well-written script could save many days or even weeks of frustration and time consuming that, of course, could be spent more productively. Um, it's an easy way to learn how to script without learning a programming language, uh, and it allows you to graphically interact with, uh, with, with this software that is very intuitive. So, Basically, identify your problem and create your own solutions. 